The Serpent Garden coils its way around eight stainless steel sculptures by the artist William Pye. Each sculpture has its own story to tell. Here, these specially commissioned works of art teach us about the properties of water. In the hands of William Pye, water becomes material for his research, in the same way that other sculptors use stone or clay. I like the unpredictability of water. I mean, I'm maddened by it, but because um, it's always a struggle to try to control it. Uh, but it's very satisfying when you get a level of control. It's never perfect. I'm always looking for something slightly better, slightly more precise. Since his childhood, William Pye has been interested in using the laws of nature to make shapes out of water, combining art and science to engineer beautiful sounds and images. <laughs> uh, this is my first studio. I was brought up in a, in a cottage in the country, which has a stream running through the garden. I used to play in the stream, I used to s swim in the stream, and at the age of uh, 16 or 17, I built a, my first waterfall across the stream with my best friend. So that awareness of that water and its mystery was absolutely part of my childhood. William Pye's work reflects the environment in which it's sighted. His ideas are sensitive to the space the work occupies. But he's not afraid to use modern materials, such as stainless steel. Stainless steel, of course, has a wonderful property. It doesn't oxidise, it doesn't rust. And if you treat it right, it's there forever. And, of course, it gets on well with water, so that it, you know, it is an obvious material. It's also a permanent material. It's there forever. Permanence is very important to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't subscribe to ephemeral art myself. You know, that's fine with some people, but I believe we should pass on what we do to generations to come. It's rather like uh, W. H. Auden said: "Art is the is the means by which we break bread with the dead." I look for the simplest solutions always. Uh, it's almost like a, a, a counterbalance to the great pyrotechnics, if that's the right word, for big fountains like the Cascade. It's, it's, it's the other side of that coin, where you're looking for the very subtlest and simplest uses of water. You know, so it's reflective, or it ripples, or it pours beautifully. I'm just very interested in things like laminar flow, where you get a very smooth rod of water, or you get a very simple reflection, or you get the water creeping over a reflective surface, for instance. Would you like to see this little very early piece? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, Just the fine. thing around the corner. Yeah, I'd yeah love absolutely. To. This is called Copper Water Trellis, mm -hmm. and it's the very first water sculpture I made. And it's absolutely precise, apart from any little yeah. bits and pieces yeah. which get in, that that trajectory will remain constant Forever. Extraordinary. Mm, and Surely. I just think it's such a simple, yeah. such a very so simple, simple And yet it looks so complicated to get that perfect yeah. pattern. Each work is an experiment that's come out of his laboratory. For William Pye, there's no clear boundary between art and science. I welcome the fact that these pieces have um, an educational element to them. Because everything I do is to do with experiment and discovery and finding out and research. And I've never seen really worried about the difference between science and engineering and art. I, th I, th I think it's all the same, pro same process in a way. The Annick Garden is an ideal setting for William Pye's work. He's collaborated with the garden designer Peter Wirtz to produce sculptures that blend with the overall concept of the whole garden. The idea of the serpent is seen in the twisting, swirling pathways that lead to the sculptures. What we try to do is to create in this angular garden space an artificial world uh, carved out in you, organized around this serpent. The backbone of this garden is a serpent. So you have the backbone which is unbreakable. You can't walk through this serpent. But uh, a serpent is a wavy line and every curve of the serpent uh, invites 
to, to create a circle. A labyrinth feel, it's a, you don't know what's hiding behind the curve, the old idea of the romantic park, you never knew behind a group of trees what was continuing, that's the idea. This sculpture shows the coanda effect, which makes water cling to the underside of smooth overhanging surfaces, appearing to defy gravity. The coanda effect was discovered by Henri Coanda, famous aeronautical engineer who went on to develop the flying saucer. Water glass shows a single curtain of water in the form of a transparent, clear, unbroken membrane of falling water wrapping around the circular enclosure that can be entered and experienced from inside. The outer view is seen through the thin film of water. When there's no wind, the film can be as clear as glass. This sculpture shows water creating roll wave patterning as the thin film flows down its smooth surfaces. Surface tension pulls the water into these rhythmical wave patterns. And surface tension occurs when the water molecules on the surface stick to each other. The space in the middle of this sculpture is designed to represent a narrow, steep-sided canyon. Vortex is the title of this sculpture, which has an air core at its centre. Water creates a vortex, as the forces of water pressure, air pressure and gravity make it move downwards in a spiral. There are many vortices in nature, like tornadoes and the black holes of the universe. This sculpture shows a meniscus, which is the convex surface of the water at the top of the sculpture. A meniscus is created because the water molecules on the surface stick together to make an invisible skin. Starburst shows water jetted upwards onto a glass surface, moving outwards to create a thin sheet of water. This forms droplets that fill and stretch until they reluctantly drop away into the abyss below. Reflection both extends and compresses space, and depths become unpredictable. Here it transforms a hemisphere into a sphere. The mirror-like hemisphere reflects the colours around it, the greens of the hornbeams, the blues, the whites and the greys of the sky like the serpent's eye. <laughs> and finally, Torricelli. This sculpture shows the effect of hydrostatic pressure, which fascinated the 17th century physicist Evangelista Torricelli. This is the pressure that comes from the head of water, or the distance between the surface of the reservoir and the pond below, regardless of the volume. A pool on high ground overflows to fill up the sculpture below through underground pipework. In making this garden, William Pye has discovered new things that he admits he's never observed before. We had no idea that the simple process of introducing water into a bowl and letting it fall out naturally would produce this animated shape. So you get this body of water moving around within this mirror polished dish and then taking on different shapes and configurations. So at one point it's a square block of water. A minute later it suddenly transmutes into a hexagon and then it's all chaotic Told you it would come back. and then as it reaches the top it suddenly smooths out why we don't quite know but as it ripples over the edge it's as if you've taken a, a, a wire across a lump of cheese and you've just flattened it all off the serpent garden is an experiment in the effects of water from which everyone can learn <laughs>